Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biochemistry playlist. In the previous video, we talked about Michaelis Minton graphs. Today, it's time for a similar one. Line Weaver's Burke plot. It's also known as the double reciprocal plot because everything is upside down. With that said, now let's get started. Please watch my previous video on Michaelis Minton before this one because they are connected. And of course, this is in my biochemistry playlist on YouTube. Quick review on previous videos. Enzymes are catalysts because they increase the rate of the reaction, the V, the velocity, through decreasing the activation energy. This is the reaction without the enzyme. We have to go all the way up the hill, but with the enzyme, it gets easier i.e. enzymes lower the activation energy. However, whether you go without an enzyme or with an enzyme, you will go from the same origin to the same destination and therefore the overall change of energy of the reaction is the same. Here is the enzyme. It has active site and allosteric site. The substrate will come and bind to the active site and then the enzyme will catalyze the reaction. For example, breaking down the substrate into some products. Enzymes are specific. They do really love specific substrate. Not everyone is welcome. I do not have my house open for every single human being. I am picky, said the enzyme. How much the enzyme loves the substrate is called affinity. So here is Michaelis Menten, which we discussed before. Here is the concentration of the substrate. And here is the initial velocity of the reaction. And the maximum that you can reach is the V max. The greater the concentration of the substrate, the faster the reaction rate. That's why we're going upwards. It's a direct relationship. Let's review Michaelis Menten. If A is directly proportional with B, therefore you can remove the sign and put equal constant times and then put B. So if we say that the greater the substrate concentration, the greater the velocity of the reaction, we can argue that velocity equals constant times the substrate concentration. Therefore, the rate of the reaction equals, what's the name of the constant? Well, in Latin or German, constant is K. And the M stands for Michaelis. So from this and through 10 steps of mathematical proof, we can arrive to this, which is the michaelis menten equation. Since we will never practically reach Vmax because it's a theoretical point, therefore let's come down to Earth and talk about just half of Vmax, which actually corresponds to Km on the x-axis. Then you divide both sides by Vmax and then you arrive that Km plus S equals S plus S, which means that Km is a measure of the substrate concentration when the velocity is half of that of Vmax. And that's about it. Therefore, Km is the substrate concentration when the velocity is half the maximum. If I told you that we will increase the number of enzymes in a reaction, what do you think is going to happen to the rate of the reaction? Well, since you have more catalysts, you'll increase the rate. Thank you. Conversely, if you have less catalysts, you will decrease the rate. Therefore, there is a direct relationship between the two. Also, as you know, enzymes are very picky and specific. We call this affinity. Affinity can be assessed by Km. However, the relationship between them is inverse. If the enzyme and the substrate love each other very much, Km will be low, which means this bond of affinity is so strong that the least concentration of the substrate will trigger it. Ah, that makes sense. I can see you from as far as a mile, and then I will come and hug you, even though you looked very small from far away. This is how strong the affinity is. Conversely, low affinity means high Km. Of course, this is just for young students. Actual chemistry is way more complex than this. Direct relationship, inverse relationship. Pause and review. Here's the Michaelis Menten and here's the control. If you go up the y-axis, what's gonna happen to Vmax? It will go up. And if you go down, what's gonna happen to the rate? It will go down. What happens if I shift the curve to the right? If you shift it to the right, Km will go down because you're going from here to here. So the x-axis is decreasing in value. And of course, when the Km decreases, affinity is higher, which means you can reach the same rate at a lower concentration. That's a strong bond right there. Conversely, if you shift the curve to the right, what's going to happen to Km? It's going to increase. 
what's gonna happen to affinity decreases in order for me to reach the same rate i need much more substrate than you think that's a weak bond you can put everything together here shift it upwards you're increasing the rate shift it downwards you're decreasing the rate shift to the right you're lowering km i.e raising the affinity Conversely, if you shift it to the right, you're increasing KM and lowering the affinity. Induction, upregulation will increase the rate, while repression, downregulation, non-competitive inhibition will lower the rate of the reaction. Activation, potentiation, sensitization will increase the affinity and lower the KM. Inactivation, competitive inhibition and desensitization will actually lower the affinity and raise the KM. And this is how medicosis makes history, by beautiful illustrations like this, handwritten. All of this was a review of the previous video. Today we will shift from Michaelis Minton to Lynn Weaver Burke. But why the flip do I need another graph? People are confused, my friend. Here is why. First of all, Michaelis Minton was a doofus graph. Why? Because Vmax was a theoretical point. The graph kept going up, 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 and then it plateaued. It never actually reached Vmax. However, using Lane Weaver book, Vmax is a reality. It's a spot on that graph. So according to this graph, 1 over Vmax is 0 0.02. So therefore, 1 over Vmax equals 2 over 100, which equals 1 over 50. If 1 over Vmax equals 1 over 50, how much do you think Vmax is? Just flip it, 50. 50 what? What's the measuring unit? 50 micromoles per second. That's why Linweaver book is beautimous, because you can more accurately estimate the Vmax. There is another thing that's so beautimous about Linweaver book. It's a straight line. As you know, it is way easier to work with straight lines than with this freaking hyperbola. And of course, it's way easier to get the slope of a straight line than a hyperbola. What's the slope of any straight line? The change on the y-axis over the change in the x-axis. The change on the y-axis is a change in 1 over Vmax. The change over the x-axis is a change in 1 over km, like this. And since both of them are flipped, i.e. it's a double reciprocal, you can rearrange the algebra to make it just km over Vmax. And that's the slope. But hey, Medicosis, what about the negative? Well, now you can drop the negative because the change on the x-axis is a positive entity. If you're not convinced, just look at the shape of the straight line. If you're going straight to heaven, it's positive. But if you're descending to the abyss, it's negative. Since I'm going upstairs, it's a positive slope. Positive km over Vmax. For these three reasons, straight line, slope, and the ability to accurately measure the Vmax is why the Linweaver Burke is awesome. That's why, by the way, we have the Celsius, the Fahrenheit, and the Kelvin systems to measure temperature. By the way, you can devise your own system to achieve certain objectives. There are no solutions in life. There are only trade-offs. You need Michaelis Minton for some stuff, Lynn Weaverberg for other stuff. You remember this? This was the Michaelis Minton equation that we talked about. By getting the reciprocal of each side of the equation, i.e. you flip this under 1 and you flip this under 1. Therefore, 1 over the initial rate equals, flip this, get the km up here, km plus s over vmax times s. You can go by reverse engineering, and this was a common denominator. Oh, I got you. And then km is here, plus s is here. And use this as the common denominator. A good doctor is a good observer. Take the s out with the s. Now it looks like this. Congratulations, you have arrived at the Linweaver Burke equation. Nothing new. It is derived from the Michaelis Menten equation, which is derived from mathematical proof of empirical observation. That was profound what I just said. Here is Michaelis Menten. Here is Linweaver Burke. Pause and review. On Michaelis Menten, this point represents Vmax. This point represents Km, which is the substrate concentration when the velocity is half the maximum. Let's pivot to Linweaver Burke. This point is 1 over Vmax, 
and this point is negative because we are not in the first quadrant anymore. We are on the negative side. Negative 1 over Km. 1 over, 1 over. It's the double reciprocal plot. Some sophisticated people might argue, since this is the lin weaver equation, we can just separate these two entities like this. Okay, who cares? Here is the reciprocal of Vmax. Here is the negative reciprocal of Km. Do you remember the michaelis menten Shift upwards is increase in Vmax. A shift downwards is a decrease in Vmax. But be very careful because since this is the reciprocal in lin weaver therefore, an upward shift will lower the Vmax, but a downward shift will raise the Vmax. It's called common sense. Michaelis Minton, shift me to the left, I'm lowering the Km. Shift me to the right, I'm raising the Km. Similarly, not oppositely. In Lean Weaver Book, when you shift me to the left, I also lower the Km. And when you shift me to the right, I raise the Km. How is that possible, Medicosis? Because there are two negative things here. Number one, it's one over km. Number two, it's a negative km. Those two negative things will cancel each other out and it's as if you are directly proportional with km. Put differently, the additive inverse and the multiplicative inverse will cancel each other out. Preach. So the end result is the same. Shift to the left, lower the km. Shift to the right, raises the km just like with michaelis menten Here is michaelis menten again. Upward shift increases the rate. Downward shift decreases the rate. Shift to the left lowers the Km. Shift to the right raises the Km. And here is lean weaver Berg. Shift me up. Lean weaver Berg. Shift me upwards. I decrease the Vmax. Shift me downwards. I increase the Vmax. Shift to the left lowers the Km, a shift to the right raises the Km. When I raise the Km, affinity goes down, as you know. An upward shift could be caused by repression, down regulation, non-competitive inhibition. A downward shift could be caused by induction of genes that code for the enzyme, or upregulation of the enzyme or the receptor. Activation, potentiation, synthesization will increase the affinity between the enzyme and its substrate. Conversely, inactivation, competitive inhibition, desensitization will lower the affinity. Pause and review. Here is everything you need to know. Michaelis Menten again. Lean Weaver Burke again. We're making history right here. And that's it in the next video. We'll talk about competitive inhibition versus non-competitive inhibition. You don't want to miss that. So subscribe, hit the bell, and save this playlist. If you like this video, you will adore my kidney physiology course at medicosisperfectsnellis.com, my general pharmacology course, which has even more graphs, such as zero-order kinetics versus first-order kinetics, as well as my antibiotics course, and my surgery high yields course, all at medicosisperfectsnetis.com. And for three students only, you can get a 40% discount towards any course on my website if you use the discount code TOXIDROME. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.